three, two, one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is episode number eight of the Central Texas Music Experience podcast. We are live on Ustream right now, and we have our guests John Reynolds and Britton Pyatt of Stoneface Cowboys. And um, great having you guys out. We're glad to be here. here. They're going to uh, play an opener for us. All right, here's the original tune. We'll start with the Go Coast Blues. I got drunk alone, I was in my hotel room Couldn't pay my bill, I guess I had the bill soon I got my ticket home and I was long gone Midnight came and I was creeping out the wind I guess I'm going where the Gulf Coast wind blows I got my ticket home and I was long gone Fly me out, fly me out to go Girl out there, I know she miss me I got my ticket home and I was long gone Fly me out, fly me out to Corpus Christi Girl out there, she wants to kiss me. I got my ticket home and I was long gone. Long There's a wasteland, you know I've seen it In the airplane flying out of Phoenix I got my ticket home and I was long gone Loud on the water, ooh the waves are chopping I'm on the beach, you singing like Janet Joplin I got my ticket home and I was long gone Fly me out, fly me out to Corpus Christi Got a girl out there, I know she miss me Got my ticket home and I was long gone Fly me out, fly me out to Corpus Christi Got a girl out there, I want to kiss me I got my ticket home I got my ticket home I got my ticket home and I was long gone Long gone Long gone Long gone oh, That was awesome. Hey, thanks for coming out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is episode number eight of Central Texas Music Experience brought to you by Horizon Design Photography. Uh, you can check them out at www.horizondesignphotos.com and you can also hit them up on horizondesignphotos at gmail.com. They do weddings, portraits, and events. Visit the website and you can purchase digital files of your, or prints of your pictures that have been taken. Uh, we're also sponsored by uh, Benez Custom Leather. Um, you can check them out on www.facebook.com backslash Benez Customs. Uh, they do custom leather work uh, like belts, holsters, slings, uh, phone cases, etc. So check them out on Facebook as well. And uh, this is episode number eight, uh, our second episode live. And um, just want to welcome John and Britton of Stoneface Cowboys. They're going to be playing tomorrow at uh, O'Brien's in Temple, Texas. So please check That's them right. out. And uh, let's let's get into this. Uh, I'm really glad you guys came in to the <laughs> yeah. studio today. Yeah, thanks for having us. I like yeah. you. I like the setup. It's very cool. Yeah, it's 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 a little ghetto rig right now, but <laughs> uh, we we make do. Go ahead and turn everybody up here. We've, we've got, got AC. Yeah. We've, yeah, got we've got cold AC. drinks. We've got yeah. smokes. We're doing okay. We're going to AC off and about right now. <laughs> <laughs> and there went the creature comforts. Yeah. So, uh, well, I, I like to ask everybody questions. And this is, I, I've, I've met you guys, you know, before, right. you know, not really talked that long. I know we talked for a while mm -hmm. when I, in New Braunfels. Yeah. So I was at shows or. Yeah. So, uh, 
Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, um, actually, in New Braunfels, uh, New Braunfels, when you guys played at uh, the River Road Ice House, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you guys had that upright bass and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Andy Garcia. Andy, yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to start uh, I'll start asking some questions, and um, we just had uh, Ashley Plumley uh, go on Twitter and, and post the Holy Harmonies Batman. That was awesome. <laughs> so, 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 we got, uh-huh. so we got a viewer. So as uh, – Viewers, as you tune in, if you have any questions that you want to ask uh, these two guys, go ahead and ask them, and we'll we'll stop what we're doing and answer those questions if you guys don't mind. Uh, I like how we got this set up now. It's a live format, so it's like being on a TV broadcast. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So. Right on. So, um, no pressure. <laughs> we'll get into some questions right now if you guys don't mind. And um, what, what was the process like? Because I've heard stories from – uh, from different artists in the area in regards to John oh. and, and where he started and, and how he got his, you know, started in music and everything. And uh, so w- what was your uh, influence in, in getting into music? Uh, well, I've always been into music. I kind of maybe had it pushed on me a little bit. I did piano lessons a lot uh, when I was uh, young for many years. So I was about in 10th grade. Then uh, I played guitar when I was 15 because I just thought piano wasn't that cool and hand me an electric guitar. That's what I want. <laughs> so then I actually had that for a minute and then I didn't really learn how to play it. And then my sister, she was going to try to learn guitar. I was like, oh, hell no. That's like, <laughs> so I learned how to do it after that and kept with it. And then uh, I always loved music. And then you had a couple jobs here and there, different things. And one day I was like, ah, this is what I want to do. So I'm shooting, shooting for it, see what happens. Never look back, really. So, uh, yet. Brenton, I <laughs> yeah. know you've got, you come from a musical family. So sure. let's talk about a little bit about that. Uh, how did you get involved in, in music outside of that? Uh, well, my, my parents definitely played probably the largest influence in that. Uh, they were both working musicians when I was, before I was born uh, and, and after. So um, my first guitar lesson, I think I, I was four years old. And it just kind of went from there, you know. I had always had a pair of drumsticks. I was running around beating on everything everywhere we went. I was that little kid that pissed everybody off. I was always making noise with something, <laughs> running around, being, you know, being a little shit. But uh, my parents, they, they, uh, I kind of took a different direction than they did. They were very much in, uh, in the rock, uh, classic rock, and and uh, Texas country stuff from you know seventies, late seventies on. Um, and I went the more rebellious w- approach. I went into the punk rock and the hardcore and the metal uh, till my mid twenties, uh, late twenties, and then uh, got me and John hooked up. Uh, <laughs> it's actually a pretty funny story. Uh, I got New Braunfels. Yeah, uh, I was I was hanging out. We were at a we were at a fundraiser in New Braunfels. I was talking to my dad, hanging out, and uh, he turned his back and. Uh, Almost got into a fight with this guy, and my dad broke it up because he told me, "Hey, that's my friend. That's my friend. Stop. Hey, calm down." And I walked off, and uh, I saw this guy standing there, and I was like, "Man, you got any? You got any cigarette papers?" And that's basically yeah. how we yeah. snuck off to the parking it's lot, easy. and uh, that's how we met. And then we realized that we lived less than a hundred yards from each other in Austin, Texas, and uh, and from there we just did a couple uh, like a happy hour acoustic so happy gigs hour with them, and then. Yeah. Uh, playing drums and then somehow or another I uh, ended up I playing a guitar lead. player and I said and I, he said well no I play guitar too I was like well let's try it out and kind of went from there he had a microphone I gave him a microphone he started singing and I was like huh I guess uh I guess we'll incorporate right in <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been a long journey no, for me but you know this is uh this has by far been uh the best experience uh, with playing and, and, and collaborating with other people. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm hoping we can push this as far as we can possibly muster. Uh, is it, is it hard, uh, you know, coming from a musical family, you know, um, not saying like you have to kind of live up to a certain expectation. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, that's uh, as soon as, well, yeah, I mean, as soon as anybody hears my last name, they just assume I'm a good guitar player because, my father is, my brother is, and uh, you know, and my other brother is uh, successful in his own right as a drummer and a vocalist. Uh, and what I do is a lot different than what they do. Um, 
but I've always I've always held them, uh, my brother Jake Pyatt and my dad Rodney Pyatt to uh, the standard to achieve. You know the place I want to be as far as a player. I don't know that I'll ever reach that. You know, uh, but it's been great to uh, grow up in that atmosphere where everybody's always learning and it and uh, we're always sharing what we do learn with each other so regardless of how much I say I don't play like him or him you know uh, there's things that I do that are absolutely took taken straight from them and yeah. and I think and vice versa you know so and your own goals are your own goals too. sure sure and uh John when you were talking about you were you know doing uh, piano and all that stuff and uh, I heard from a, a good friend of of y'all, Stormy Lee. Oh, you yeah. guys had a, like a Storm. jam band. I got, I've pretty much seen that you guys have. Well, I know you in particular have pretty much jammed with mostly every musician that's you know coming up. Everyone that's kind of split off. Everyone kind of started in the same place, and everyone kind of well, went off. It all, yeah, it all connects. One of my first bands. I come from a punk rock background too, and one of the first bands I had was called Milk, and uh, my good buddy uh, John Hull, who plays along with Stormy, plays with uh, Care Belly, and. Who knows who else? And uh, he was in the band. He had, had maybe, I don't know if he had a drum set. I was like, you should get a drum set. And he got one for Christmas. So we played one show. Didn't ever really do anything with that. But we, me and John ended up working together at a music store down the road. And he would always try to get me to come out to his band practice. And I never really met Stormy at that point. Maybe once or twice. And I just kind of turned it down. I was like, no, I don't think I want to play country music. I don't think so. I don't think so. And uh, finally, I went out there, and I was like, oh, this sounds cool. What, what is this? And they had a keyboard sitting there, so I jumped in on the keyboard. And then me and Stormy later on played in a band together, and we just kind of started having our own bands. But, yeah, all the it's a big community around here. Everyone is either jammed on stage or played in a band with someone else or lived at Marvin's house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've kind of talked about your individual uh, journeys as far as, you know, getting into music and everything. So, and you, you kind of told us a story about how you guys met and everything. So what was the formation of, of Stone Face Cowboys like? Uh, how, how did that actually start outside of you two meeting each other? Mm, it was 2009. I decided I just want to do some acoustic songs. I'd been writing a bunch of songs. I was like, well, I just want to go play these acoustic guitar. So I started doing some shows just like that. Kind of singer-songwriter. Then uh, I just had the idea, to, I had the, the urge to get a whole band going. It sounded like fun. I think Mylan had a band. Mylan had Seven Years Today. I was like, that just looks like a lot of fun. Get the drums and the guitars and all that. So I thought, oh, I ran into uh, Robbie, Robbie Wilson. And um, I asked him if he was playing drums for anyone. He was like, no. Nah. So we started jamming. And his initially it was just me and him. And then we recruited Corey Sanders initially on guitar. And Zach Wilson, Robbie's little brother, follows on bass shortly after that. And um, it's kind of evolved since then. We've gone through several different players, but the song remains the same. It's still it's up <laughs> yeah, say. Yeah. So uh, what uh, was the influence behind the name? Actually, the best, that's a good story. I was in a band with Stormy, and we were called the Storm and Slim Band. Kind of because we never could think of anything else. But our good friend, Steven Salazar... <laughs> Also a guitar player, uh, and also in that current band, he wanted to call the band Stone Face Cowboys. No one liked it but me, and it wasn't even my idea. And I was like, oh, I just kept it in my brain. So when I was looking for a band name, I just remember that one. I was like, oh, that's cool. And it just kind of kind of stuck. Yeah. So sometimes it's hurt us. We've uh, been like, oh, y'all aren't country, or they'll say you're country, but you're a little more rock and roll. So what what genre would you classify yourself in? From different backgrounds and, you know, like you said, the name is kind of, you know, goes yeah. one way or the other. So what, what genre would you I would say in? Uh, cosmic rock and roll. But uh, rock and roll. Yeah. Americana. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's uh, everything American, you know. Yeah, I mean, you everything American, American I mean, music from, from from bluegrass influence to blues to R&B to rap to, to you know American hip hop, uh, blues, rock, metal, you know, take all influences reggae, and... dubstep. I mean, it's a little bit of we may not incorporate all of those sounds uh, 
in a real like heavy blanket of sound, but those we influences all listen are to there. Pretty varied styles of music. I listen to a wide variety. He listens to his, listens to a wide variety. I listen to different bands than he does, uh, but an obscurity uh, reigns. Yeah, about all that all stuff too, mixes cause... in, and we might not play a dubstep song, but hell, we've we've listened to it. It's affected yeah, us yeah. somehow, you know. Same with reggae. We don't really have many reggae tunes, but you might hear. You know, you might hear something that allude to it every once in a while. So it's like a healthy appreciation for all different types of genres that are out there. We don't listen to one type mm -hmm. of music, so why mm -hmm. play one type of music? Yeah, I'm kind of the same way with musical choices. I kind of jump back and forth every now and then. It just depends True. on the mood. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I'm a big fan of Roadkill Ghost Choir, and nobody knows who they are. <laughs> 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 that sounds like, interesting. But, hey, but the, they're, really, they're a really cool band. If, uh, when we get off camera, we finish, I'll let you guys listen to it. Cool. You'll, I think you'll be blown away by that. And you kind of mentioned the influences... So if you could, if you can pinpoint John, and then we'll, we'll get to you the same question. Um, what, what primarily from when you were a, a child and now? What are your musical influences that keep that keep you uh, engaged in music and keep you want to, you know, keep going? Uh, you know what? We kind of had this discussion similar. It was, a, it was strictly on guitar players. We say who are the three most top three influential guitar players, and I said. Well, I love Led Zeppelin, you know, so I had to put in uh, Jimmy Page. I love J uh, Jimi Hendrix, too. I got a real classic rock background. I love that stuff, and it's that's what I listen to. But the other stuff, I, the other type of music I really have a soft spot for, I like indie rock. I like Arcade Fire. Um, I like MGMT. Mm, something, a little, something a little different. Yeah. Anything with a good melody. I love good melody and some good guitar. And that's what influences you now? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, same question for you. Man, I'm, I'm a... In my writing, I don't really know that I... As far as when I sit down and write a song, I don't really know that I consciously take any influences. Um, but having said that, with guitar, uh, I'm a guitar nerd, you know. Uh, Dimebag Daryl Abbott was one of the greatest guitar players ever lived. Um, Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, those guys, uh, great players. Uh, there were, I don't know. I mean, there, there's, there's everything I've ever heard, whether I liked it or not, has influenced me in one one form or fashion. Like um, either I don't want to go in this but, direction, but I want to go in this it. direction. Yeah, oh, or I'll hear something. I'll hear a song of my life. I, I hate this song, but that guitar sound is really cool. And I can appreciate it for that piece of art, you know. Uh, but I don't know. I never really even have thought much about that. Okay, so um, since you brought up writing, it's, this interview is going by so smoothly <laughs> because we just keep segueing into my questions. And I, I, I shit you not, I'm literally, I'm, I format questions. I try to keep a, uh, a kind of a structure to, you know, the interview process, you know, we like to kind of just relax. We don't know the questions, folks. Yeah. We're not <laughs> so, but it's, it's kind of cool when it just jails like that and you're just kind of going, you know, into the next question. So you, you mentioned uh, Britain uh, writing, writing a song. Mm -hmm. What is your process, if you don't mind getting into that? I mean, is it like just a spur of the moment, whatever you're feeling when you, you know, pick up a guitar or is it you, you methodically sit down and this is what I'm going to do? Uh, no, I don't really so much methodically sit down. I, I may, when I sit down and write uh, music on the guitar, and arranging arranging a song, but as far as uh, lyrics, uh, oddly enough, I find that my best uh, moments are when I'm just completely miserably exhausted and about to just pass out sitting up, and that's when I have these ideas just start flooding in if i don't put them on paper i pass out soon and it's gone yeah because you're not so relaxed yeah you know. I, I don't i don't know what uh once i get to that point of exhaustion why that's probably got, that pre-dmt stage <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but uh the the only real process that i have is that uh i try to write it down as soon as it get comes to me you know um and then i i really try really hard not to repeat myself i don't i try not to write one song that sounded even similar to the one before it, or one five songs before, and that really limits uh, the amount of songs that that I'm I put you know that I write. How often do you go back and after you you know write something down and say, oh man, I don't know what I was thinking when I wrote this down? Does that happen very happen very often for songwriters? 
Uh, for me, I, re- I almost remember everything, everything I've ever written. I mean, I may not remember it, but if I look at that piece of paper, I could tell you where I was, probably what year and month it was, how I was feeling. I always try to you date know. mine. I always put, if I can remember, I'll put a time date when I write song. But I had a friend, his name was Christian, and uh, I remember one, it always stick with me. He said, he'd say, um, you know, every time I write a bad song or write even a bad line, I don't ever throw it away. I just put it in a shoebox or put it somewhere, stash away, and I'll go back and l- look at it. Most of the time, it still sucks, but every once in a while, it's like I'll come across it and I'll think, "Oh, that, why did I throw that away? That was that was that was genius." It's kind of like a hidden that. gem. You yeah, you just yeah, you don't realize that it was really good when you write it and you come back. So I always remembered that, and I always kept everything I wrote, even. Some stuff is just bad. It's, it's never yeah, gotten good. It's yeah. not like wine, but, but well, sometimes so, so you what's find your it. process like, John? Is it kind of the same? I one? always claim not to really write songs. I really like. In fact, I, I haven't ri- written a song recently. I just haven't felt anything. I just wait till one comes, and a good song usually just pours out, and I don't even feel like I write. I don't even remember writing them most of the time. I just write down on the paper. That's why I like to put the date and time, so. I'll, I won't have any recollection really of, mm, you know, what I was doing when I wrote it. I think Sometimes I think it's the ghost of Davy Crockett. <laughs> yeah, also the ghost that, of Davy Crockett. I just that's what I think. Sometimes of the ghost he of channels Crockett. me, and I have to pick up the violin and just just whip out a couple songs, and who knows what comes out. Well, to interrupt this interview process, uh, one of our viewers and Justin Bravo <laughs> wanted to ask, uh, how do you maintain your beard? How do I maintain my beard? Yeah. I have I have a uh, a daily routine of r- r- lather, rinse, repeat. Uh, you you know you, it's hair like a like any other, so you got to wash and condition it. You know, <laughs> brush it out and uh, just let it do let it do the work. That's a big shout out to Justin Bravo, the yeah, record Ramblers. Hey, thanks for watching, buddy. So uh, when you were um, so we, we talked about the writing process. Now, when you guys come together and practicing, whatever, and you guys bring songs to the table, and so what is that process like when you decide, okay, this is where we, we want to go with this song or we don't want to go with this song or we want to take bits of this? Has that ever happened in a, in a, in a session where you guys are sitting there and saying, hey, we, we want to do this? Or, or is it like a collective writing uh, you know, where you guys just jam out a whole brand new song just right off the right off the spot. Right I think on the spot. John has like probably between twenty and forty songs that he has written that were that are all damn good songs. Uh, prior 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 to me ever meeting him, so uh, he has a pretty big library of stuff already. Since I um, met him, all of my songs have been really bad. Yeah, I just keep <laughs> trashing it all up, man. You know, but uh, no, uh, you know, he has a lot written. So it's it's kind of one of those things where he brings it to the table and says, "Here's the song." Well, we just you have know, a lot of material already, out. but everyone, you know, everyone writes songs, and Britt's got a few songs. Uh, we're still bringing, we're still putting together. We got a new lineup going on right now: uh, Andy Garcia on bass, and uh, Rob, uh, Robert, Jeremy Roberts on uh, drums. I call him Beefy. So, so how is so how is it uh, going from the old version of you know Stoneface Cowboys to what you guys are going now? Uh, you feel like a direction has changed, or you feel like it's more clear? It's the sounds changed a little bit. I can't say it hasn't. It's rounded out for sure because we've got a stand up bass, electric guitars, drums, you know. But uh, it, it, it's the sound has changed. The drum styles are a little different. Uh, and the bass tones, the sound is obviously different being that it's a stand-up, stand-up bass. bass. So, um, uh, you know, it's hard. It's more to, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's been, it's Changes been, it a little bit. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like when you, uh, you move into a house and you really like the house, you know, and the living room is this really cool blue color. And then you come home one day and your old lady's painting it this, like, bright yellow. Yeah, and you know, and you didn't realize like, yeah, look around. How cool this room really is <laughs> until it was yellow, you know. Like I never really noticed until like, you know. It's kind of the same thing. It's just uh, it was the same yeah, thing, same song, same same uh, energy, but uh, a little different uh, 
Well, the band like is almost inter- different frozen. interpretation. Yeah, a little different approach, maybe. You know, the band is kind of like it takes it's kind of alive on its own, and it kind of morphs and uh, does its thing. You know, people have come and gone. Style has changed. The venues have changed. The songs have changed. But uh, so, so what's the, it like? Is you talking about venues? So what's it like? You know, you guys are coming from the you know coming from the Austin area. Mm-hmm. So what's it like? What is the scenes? How do the scenes uh, you know differ? I, I know the answer to this question. I just want to ask you guys. Want to get your opinion on that? You know, the Austin scene. It's there's lots of competition. It's tough. Yeah, I'm kind of proud of people. Who are like, how do y'all make a living? I don't. We don't play Austin because can't make a living. And we actually, actually, how we make a living, which is kind of we're like the the oddballs out, but With the little redheaded stu- children. Kind yeah, of I'm kind of proud of that thing, fact. You know? But um, Austin scene's real, it's real intense. Uh, it's, it's kind of touristy, you know, unless you're playing on certain parts of town. Right. There's lots of people from Austin that aren't from Austin, and the people from Austin go to about two or three bars. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it's well, really easy to sort through them. Yeah. Um, going out, you know, Austin scene, it's got a lot of cover bands, um, and then they're oversaturated, it's oversaturated with bands, so people get, yeah, it can suck, and people are still going to it. It can be overstimulation, and people just get burned out, you know. Does that, does that hinder, does that hinder people coming out to, well, I mean, yeah, definitely, because if you've got. 80 bars on one side of the street for five blocks, and another 80 on the other side of the street, and there's bands in, you know, 60 of, of them on each side of the street, 120 bands. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, I it's kind of like, well, what, who has the best drink specials? Yeah, That's you're where not we're going to go. The band. Now, just you, go somewhere, to be there. you go somewhere like New Braunfels or San Marcos, uh, where there's not an oversaturation of, of, of musicians and artists, where people take more notice to what is coming through and they, and they have more time and, uh, a chance to really appreciate what's happening in front of them. They're actually going there to listen to music, and then, as a result, buying beer. Yeah, it's a it's a great atmosphere beer. out there. When I mean, I, when I love out there. I love playing Austin. I love to play anywhere I can play. Uh, Austin has been great to us. We've made we've been making a living there for quite a while. Um, it's fair. It's very like. Um, but it's not for the weak of heart, man. No, it, I mean, it, if you. Uh, it's a if you're, on a, if, you're scene. if you're on an ego trip, it's gonna eat you up and chew you out, you know, or, yeah. or, or chew you up and spit it's you out rather. T- yeah, it's tough. Uh, um, you gotta want to do it. You gotta really want to yeah, do it. Yeah, you gotta want it. Wanna, yeah. I guess that's kind of cliche, <laughs> but it's so, like a real band scene. You, there's not like a there's not like a songwriter acoustic scene in Austin. That yeah. don't happen. Maybe <laughs> yeah, like one or two venues, but. So it's almost like dog eat dog out there, huh? Oh, very much. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, you know, we're friends with all our, almost all our friends are musicians, uh, or or bartenders, and everybody's in competition with each other, and it's very cutthroat. It's not it's not an ugly thing, you know. It's not being hateful about it. It's just every, everybody. so many venues, and you're everybody's all out to try to do the same thing, which is push your music as far as it can go. You know, uh, reach as many people with it as you can. Uh, and only, not everybody's going to get to do it. You know, not everybody's going to make it. There's going to be a lot of people that do it, uh, and and stay at a level that maybe like we're at now. We want to move beyond, but uh, there's people that play at that level all their lives and they're happy and they're that that's they're it's successful all in their to own what right. You're after. Like a year or two ago, I could like him. You know, the shows that I have, the residencies on 6th Street, and I couldn't even have imagined, you know, being at that level. And, you know, now, I've, you know, I got to say, I got my eyes up on a, on, a, on a new level. You know, I'm ready to hit the road more, play some more shows, but uh, everything changes, you know. It's the way you look at it. Well, if you don't mind, uh, we're going to deviate from the questions a little bit and plug a couple of uh, tour dates, if you don't mind, and then we sure. can... A break for a song if you guys don't mind yeah we got a busy weekend yeah um tomorrow night uh which is august 8th uh they're going to be at o'brien's uh irish pub in temple texas it starts at nine o'clock uh you guys have an opener uh will janky from headley grange okay he's gonna open it up doing doing a solo thing okay and then uh friday august the 9th rednecks draft house and it's in midland is a billiard right Mm. it's in midland texas starts Mm -hmm. at eight o'clock so get your asses out there 
Um, Saturday, August the 10th, Boondocks Bar and Grill in San Angelo, Texas, starts at 8 o'clock. And then you guys are going to be back here on August the 17th, uh, Celebrate Clean Festival. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be at 6 o'clock. And then again at O'Brien's Irish Pub on the 23rd of August, which is a Friday, uh, in Temple, Texas. And you're going to be at 8. And do you guys have any openers for that one as well? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. So just uh, check them out on uh, www.reverbnation.com backslash stoneface cowboys i don't have to spell it for you because if you don't know how to spell spell it you shouldn't be watching this podcast anyway and uh also check them out on uh facebook uh you can check them out on www.facebook.com backslash stoneface cowboys and you can check out all the the tour dates all the happenings you know with uh stoneface cowboys you can listen to some music too which is great which we are going to listen to right now so whenever you guys are ready Scars on my hands Cause my curves are deep And the night it takes so long When you can't fall asleep Girl, I still call you mine Girl, I still call you mine I seen you with your new man But I still see you in my arms Out on my bed, so big is so wrong. Oh, girl, I still call you mine. Oh, girl, I still call you mine. If I never, ever, 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 never, ever know you at all But I feel it still feel so wrong I right, pick it, bring I sit here all alone You know what song that I sing And I play my guitar Till my fingers bleed Girl, I still call you mine Girl, I still call you mine Oh, but if I never Ever, 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 never, ever know you at all. What would I feel? Would I still feel so wrong?
sit here alone The moonlight will is glowing And the air is so cold But the wind it ain't blowing Girl I still call you mine Girl I still call you mine Oh but if I never Awesome. Appreciate that. Right, thanks. Man, if you can't feel nothing listening to that, something's wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, you guys got some great harmonies. Oh, uh, thank you. I, I love thank that. You. I love that that contrast that you guys have. Uh, we just got a viewer say great song. Uh, thank you. Great viewer. song and uh, with that big exclamation mark. So thank you, viewer. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, viewers. If you guys are out there, uh, again, if you guys have any questions, please uh, feel free uh, to, uh, you know, we're doing a live Twitter feed along with this Ustream feed. And then uh, just to let you guys know that uh, we're going to have the video up on YouTube uh, on Tuesday. We're also going to post the uh, podcast on iTunes next Tuesday as well. So um, you'll get to see, you know, this again. And please continue to view and like the page. And then, um, you know, check definitely check out Stoneface Cowboys at the dates. We're going to go ahead and plug these dates again just in case you didn't catch it before they started playing. Uh, tomorrow night, which is a Thursday, August the 8th. They're going to be at O'Brien's Irish Pub in Temple, Texas at 9 o'clock. Uh, Friday, August the 9th, uh, at Rednecks Draft House and Billiards at, in Midland, Texas, starts at 8 o'clock. Saturday, August the 10th, at Boondocks Bar and Grill in San Angelo, Texas, uh, starts at 8 o'clock. And they'll be back in Colleen uh, Saturday, August the 17th, for Celebrate Colleen F uh, Festival, starts at 6. And Friday, August the 23rd, again at uh, O'Brien's uh, Irish Pub in Temple, Texas, starts at 8 o'clock. And... Uh, if you can't remember all the stuff that I just put, uh, StoneFaceCowboys.com. Yeah, yeah, st yeah there you go. Yeah, and Simple. then I'll, I'll Reverb Nation too. A Reverb Nation, that it'll take you to either one. Yeah, and uh, you can also catch uh, some of the songs and uh, a couple of videos too. Check them out on YouTube. They got a web presence on YouTube as well. And uh, yeah, we got some songs. We'll too. go ahead and tag them up so that way you know everybody cool. can look at it. And so. Um, Let's get back into some some more questions, and if okay. you guys don't mind, um, I want to. I don't know if you guys remember exactly what we were talking about before we went to um, uh, to the um, the break. Uh, Justin Bravo just said, "Badass, have to run, y'all. Tell him to stop by. I'll bottoms up, and I'll, he's gonna buy you a beer." Awesome. Cool. All right, Love hey you, uh, Justin, we'll probably see you out there. I forgot to, he's got open mic night tonight. I totally forgot. Oh yeah, that's oh true. God, Alrighty, noise. yeah. I guess uh, I guess we're gonna go, and. Um, so just to piggyback off of what you guys were talking about in the Austin scene uh, when it comes to uh, marketing and, you know, kind of putting yourself out there and working. Um, what has been the hardest part, um, you know, putting your putting the band out there, putting yourselves out there uh, as far as, the mu you know, with the music industry, the way it is now? What's the hardest part? Uh, I guess it would be kind of uh, with, well, there's a lot of competition there, like we were talking about. And. People aren't there for, they're there to drink beer in Austin in particular. Even, it's just, even though it's supposed to be music capital of the world, they're there to drink beer and they expect to hear live music as a second, secondary thought. So you really got to break through to get, to get a hold of them. Uh, and I, would, I would say that like any, any uh, good business model, uh, it takes money to make money. Uh, so definitely the bands that are going to get noticed first are going to be the guys that have guys and gals that have uh, 
some financial backing or you know maybe even some of their own uh, to to really push their uh, to push their camp and push their career. Uh, I, I I think just to it, buy a I think presence almost. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, I think a lot of people they romanticize the idea of I'm going to buy a guitar and start a country band or rock band and I'm going to go be George Strait. I'm going to go be famous, and that's not how it works. And unfortunately. Talent is not the biggest concern when it comes to uh, getting a band out in front of people. I know that sounds terrible, yeah, but it's very much between musicians and musicians. It's very much yeah. about marketability, you know. Yeah. Are you good looking enough, or are you just ugly enough to be interesting? <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, whatever it may be, but uh, it, it's it, it takes the whole package these days. Um, and I think our approach is a little more organic, a little more raw, uh, where we're not throwing that much money. We're not at it. We're not. Uh, Bringing in private investors, we're pushing this on a nitty gritty. It's a, you know, it's a very punk rock. It's a very DIY. We yeah. do our own CDs. We're not we big on contracts. We're not shirts. big on contracts. Yeah. You know, we want to do our thing. We want we. If we decide we want to change our mind right in the middle of something, we damn sure better be able to. If I got now, a piece do, of paper, you guys like, like no, when you, you guys good. like, uh, you know, you know, going to a studio or just you know, basically doing it all yourself. Oh, uh, we're actually doing pre-production ourselves, mm -hmm. uh, just so that when we do go to the studio, uh, it's streamlined and very smooth, and everyone knows exactly what they're going to play, so we can save money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and of course, we're having uh, my pops is going to come in and produce that. that yeah. So we're looking for forward that's, to that's that awesome. too. So we're hoping uh, sometime, maybe sometime after uh, the first of the year, uh, 2014, we'll. Uh, dive into that we're almost done with our production recordings now we'll be sharing those too yeah, kinda, that's awesome we'll yeah, be, uh, we, give, we give our, our music away on uh on reverb nation yeah that's another uh, thing as far as marketing um i guess that's probably our our thing we do <laughs> we give away our music or just like download it yeah you know we don't really have it for sale if you want to pay for it we will gladly take your money but we, most importantly we want you to listen to it and enjoy it and if you like it, please share. go download it. Go to stonefacecowboys.com or Reverb Nation. Download it, share it with your friends. Uh, yeah. And give it away. Get other people interested. And that's that's why we're putting it out there, to be heard. If uh, if we were out to just be millionaires, we damn sure wouldn't be guitar players. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. Most so, definitely. <laughs> you know, this is, uh, we're doing this because we love it. And, uh, you know, they, 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 there's an old saying that says, if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. And that's not necessarily true because this can be hard work, as much fun as it is. Uh it can be hard work, but when it's, you, when when you, you love enjoy you most it, of it, it, it makes the it makes the tough parts a little easier. To take you're willing out. to suffer through some of the more uh, skimpy times, you know. What mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Uh, and 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 not give up. You know, you give up. Uh, there's there's ten guys right behind you ready to take your, your spot. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Well, everyone's got their own story, and I've had uh, you know we're on our eighth episode, and so let, let's let's talk about the story, the the struggles behind the the music. Um, you guys are very talented, and you said, you know, there are some times, you know, where you just, you know, you get tired, you know, you can't give up. So how do you motivate yourself to stay engaged and, and say, okay, this is, this is what I want to do, you know? I, I think it's kind of like uh, uh, an alcoholic needing a drink when they wake up, you know? It's just I something. have no problem pl playing a show every day. It's, it's, yeah, it's kind of it's something ingrained. There's something, something hardwired wrong with us that makes us want to do this and hungry for it. In uh, we fact, don't when like I'm, days off. Yeah, when I'm not playing, I don't know what to do. I, laundry. I mean, life, <laughs> life, breathing, waking up and, and, and uh, doing the normal routine so that we can play. Uh, I mean, there's, n there's not anything else in this life that I want to put this much heart and soul into uh, and, and sacrifice this much for. And it's been tough. Like, I mean, in these last two months, I've, I've blown up two amps. Uh, you know, I don't know how many issues we've had with gear. Uh, I don't know how many three or four pedals broke on me. You know, I mean, it's just been one thing after another, but uh, we, we, make it, we make do. We, we make, make it, it happen, and the universe sent, tends to unfold for us, so we run with that. I mean, if every, if every booking agent in the world said, screw Stoneface Cowboys, we're not going to book y'all, we'd be standing in the street somewhere with a guitar still and playing. a hat on the ground still playing. So it's, it's uh, money's nice, you know. I sure hope I, I, sure hope I make a, a good chunk of it, but um, doing, what, doing what we're doing. But just just uh, having the opportunity to be able to do this and, 
and put ourselves out there like this uh, is really kind of a chance of a lifetime. And I'd, I'd uh, be really upset with him and, and vice versa and myself as well if uh, for some reason we said, you know, uh, I'd rather uh, go be a civil engineer or something. I'm leaving the band, you know. I personally don't understand if you don't have a dream in life. I don't understand how you can wake up and not... You only live life once. You might as well do something that is interesting or cool or that uh, makes a difference. Yeah, I'd that rather you like to do. I'd rather fall flat on do my it. face. Try. Yeah. I'd rather fall flat on my face trying to do music than to to grow old and go. Damn, I wish I'd try. I wish I'd done Me that. Me too. Yeah, I would be pissed off if I was old and be like, wow, I didn't even try. I don't even know if I'm gonna get to be old or not. Like, you know, really, yeah. let's be honest. Here. And I mean, as much as we we're say, we're musicians. We're, it's not the hell well, the, the last thing, the last thing in this life that you want to do is live with regret. You know, sure. it's like maybe I should have done this, maybe I should have done that. There's no life that has no room for maybes. Yeah. You know, it's either it is or it isn't, and it's all about how much work you guys put into it. Like you got, like you said, sure. and, we're definitely doing it. You know, when we would do, we do it for whatever amount of money. You know, because we don't like to play for free. Yeah. But <laughs> no. you know, it don't have to be a lot of money. Around. There's but, only so much love, you know. That you <laughs> but we're, we're definitely, we're definitely in it for the long haul as a career choice. As you know, something we're singing a lot of time and effort uh, and heartache into, and hopefully with good results. So, um, to kind of piggyback off of, you know, money you know fame you know all that stuff give it to what, me what 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 is what is the what what do you what is the ultimate goal uh, what what are you actually looking for can you pinpoint what you're looking for in the music there's or, some milestones that i would like to achieve yeah, but i don't necessarily it. have to uh, on a lower end i'd be completely satisfied being a fairly recognizable appreciated regional texas artist that'd be that'd be fine with me up from there, I'd love to be like on Rolling Stone or uh, world famous. I don't know. I don't know if I have a, a cap because I have it. I have to have, I'd like to experience every level and then uh, decide from there. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's repeat the question. It was what? What is if you could if you could pin, if you could pinpoint what uh, kind of goals that you have? That's right. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I, I think everybody, yeah, everybody's definition of success is different. I, I, I really, it, it's not. I, I want to be remembered. I want to be remembered for what I do, what I, what, who I was. I want to. I would love to leave a mark. Uh, whether it's a real shiny mark or a really tarnished dark spot on the industry, <laughs> it really doesn't make a damn to me. I just want to be. Burn. Just want to be remembered. I want to be known. Uh, you know, I don't want to be the next Stevie Ray Vaughan. I don't want to be the most famous guitar. That's not even. Uh, that that seems ludicrous to me to even think in that direction. I, for me, I want to be respected and remembered for for the guy I was and the kind of musician that I was. You know, um, I mean, I like to joke around, I like to mess around, all that shit. But uh, I, when it comes to the music stuff, so I'm not uh, there's not too much bullshitting about it. I get pretty serious real quick because uh, it, it's my love. Um, it's ruined many a good relationship, uh, lost to many a good women over it. And uh, the mistress remains to be the road. So, uh, if I can play, if I can play 300 days a year for the rest of my life till I just drop dead, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. That's, you know, I mean, that's right I want to be. I want to play. I want to make music, and I want to uh, live like it's not going to happen again tomorrow. Yeah, because you you really only get. I hate to be cliche about it, but you really only get one shot. Yeah, and, and the window's you know? the window's small. Um, you know, I'm 31 years old. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a father of a 13 year old child, and he his generation is the generation that's being taken notice of. You know, his generation and maybe four or five years older than him. Uh, all these teens, you know, these guys are just phenomenal musicians. These little prodigies coming up, uh, and guys like me are uh, just the old guy now you know that's, that's that so-and-so's dad you know i'm not yeah you know like uh the younger kids don't say oh that's brit pyatt the guitar player that's oh that's everett pyatt's dad well do you, you feel know, like he plays guitar too well do you feel like <laughs> this, this new generation that's coming up is kind of losing what our generation has gained is like you know pulling from inspiration and saying like for example the farther you go back 
in time with music with less technology. Yeah, and it's the, the music is is, is pure. I, I, more than we did. I think that as far as like uh, radio music, Nashville country, uh, the L.A. rock stuff that's being pushed. Uh, I can name names. I'm just gonna p- piss people off, but. I think it sucks. I think it's horrible. I think it's terrible. I think that most of these people need to really reevaluate what the fuck they're doing. Uh, pretending to be something you're not is very, it very much turns me off. And to hear a, to see a guy in a cowboy hat and a pair of tight jeans talking like this and trying to rap and shit, it's bullshit. And that's not music to me. I think I know who you're that's, talking about. But that's <laughs> that's that's the powers that be sitting in the studio going, I can make money with this son of a bitch. You sing this. Yeah. Uh, and it's trash. It's garbage. And, and the problem is that people are force fed this and they accept it. Does that so dilute, does somebody... that dilute the, the the what you guys are like? For example, like for real musicians, I'm not trying to down. It takes anybody. credibility away yeah. to people from people who are on like you know the Texas country scene. Uh, a lot of those guys are international. Uh, they're all over the place. You know, all over the world even, but. They may not achieve the same status as Sugarland, yeah, because they're not being crammed down everybody's throat on the radio and, and uh, CMT videos and stuff like that. Um, people don't recognize good music once they hear it because they've been so bombarded with trash. I think a lot of times, I think stuff like Pandora and is it might be saving, might be saving some kids uh, as far as being able to be exposed to a bunch of different type of music stuff that they might not stuff that's not force fed i mean it is in a way but they have a they can choose what they're listening to they have more a wider range of uh of stuff to pick from and i i think a lot of people develop or i think people are developing their own musical tastes it's kind of a trend which is funny but hopefully it's a trend that continues yeah like for me like i like to go online you know, like I, the internet's a, is a great tool, you know, sure. and I mean, obviously, it can be used for good or it can be used for bad. But it's kind of mm-hmm. like the Wild West on the internet, you know. Mm-hmm. And there's lots it, of stuff you can find nowadays. It's yeah, just, and it's, if you go in, out there and you just have a different mind than like what you're, we were being force fed on the radio or on MTV or on you know MTV Two, CMT, whatever you know, whatever you 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 fancy. You go out there and you just keep an open mind and you, you go and find some stuff. Go find a YouTube video of some, you know, like I, I like to listen to podcasts. Uh-huh. I'm a big fan. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Joe Rogan Experience. I love listening <laughs> to Joe Rogan Experience. He's a funny guy. He, he talks about a lot of stuff and he's kind of like inspiration for me to want to do podcasts like this. Um, so like I'll, I'll listen, I'll watch and he'll talk about different things. And, and when you listen and hear different things, it makes you want to go out and look for those things and then you get interested in other stuff and mm. then you kind of is like okay you draw inspiration from here from One there to another yeah. yeah and yeah i like the fact that the internet's the wild you know like the wild west mm-hmm. you know there's only so much you know censorship that you can do on the internet sure. like right now we're streaming live on Ustream talking about what the you know whatever the fuck we want to talk about who gives a shit you know, it's they're, well, they're going to come, you know, shut us down. Hell no, they're not going to no, shut us down. Right. <laughs> Fair not. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I 100% agree with you guys as far as. Um, now, know. that opinion, my opinion is going to piss a lot of people off. Okay. That's going to piss a lot. I mean, what I just said, that's going to yeah. piss a lot of people off. And, and a lot of my good friends are going to disagree with me. But it's an opinion, you know. Yeah. It's not gospel. It's an opinion. But uh, I think there's a lot of great artists out there. I just think that. The markets are being oversaturated with just garbage, and it's and it really takes credibility away from hardworking musicians who have really honed their craft. And they get to get lumped in with these butt clowns, <laughs> you know, economic. because yeah. because they're they're you know that's the difference of that's the difference of say you know trying to get me to call myself a painter and I'm painting by number out of a coloring book, yeah. you know. I mean that's or, not art. Or being a carpenter. You can, you, you can, and I'm buying IKEA, IKEA stuff exactly. and still trying to sell it yeah. as handmade. That's just, yeah. you know, that's it's bullshit. It's half assing and, and uh, it, it sucks for people who really are trying. I really appreciate, the, you know, people that go it. out there and put the effort to put something not necessarily different, but something raw, hmm. something that's real that speaks to people. And we need more of that. Like the last song you guys just played. Like I said, if you don't feel nothing, just mm-hmm. even if you don't 
know the song, if you never heard the song before, you listen to the harmonies, come on. There's, there's, there's heart and there's soul in that. And that's what music is missing. Like, for example, one of my favorite bands out there right now is Seven Years Today. The, oh, yeah. Mylon's a great singer. He's got a powerful voice. Oh, yeah. And he's like a fucking rock star, you know? Their stage presence is awesome. And their music is awesome, too. And it's like you don't hear it. And it's like a mixture, you know, like, mm. you know, rock, you know, um, you know, that Americana, a mm. little country here and there, but you can't classify them. And I like when you can't put somebody in a box. Yeah. I like Those it when the, the best yeah, bands. There's like, okay, I don't know exactly what I, I don't know where to put you guys in, in a genre. I mean, I, you know? I, I appreciate a band who hones their own sound, uh, you know, a band like Tool. You know, they, they very much sound like them. There's nobody else really, you don't mistake them. Yeah, that's what you want to strive for. But at the same time, they're only ever going to sound like Tool. They're not going to branch out and, and do anything differently because that's the formula that worked for them. Yeah. That's what they do. You know, other, you know, we take a little bit different approach where there's not maybe necessarily one sound or style. Uh, you know, of course, it does come out how you know we do our thing and it comes out to be our style but we're yeah, not really it's pushing awesome. for we're not pushing for one sound or one direction you know right, we just right. it's it, it we synthesize right. everything and it just comes it feels out. right it feels right use it you know if it doesn't yeah. then yeah something organic should. you know yeah. like you're saying it's a you know your band is like a, a living you know organism we let you the know, songs you know. kind of grow uh, you know sometimes they change with we'll play it a few times we'll play it out live a few times and then we'll just it settles, you know? Yeah, before we even got on the air, you guys said that it's, it's been a while since you guys have actually done some acoustic stuff. So this, oh, is, yeah. a, this is a real treat We've for actually me. never done, like, two uh, acoustic yeah. guitars. I think maybe, uh, maybe just sitting in the living room just uh, on a whim, just, hey, check out this song I know. Yeah, you know? that had to but, be uh, it. Other than that, no, we've never performed together acoustic. I've always played electric guitar yeah. since I played in this band. Uh, so, yeah, this is a, this is a new... A new thing for us. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, like I said, I really appreciate you guys coming and taking the They're time out of your day. Yeah. Us, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, uh, we'll go ahead and um, I'll ask you maybe like one or two more questions. I'll plug our sponsors again, plug your dates, and then we'll we'll go with an outro with a song. Cool. We've, we've, uh, we're kind of hitting a point where, like, I kind of running out of questions. I think <laughs> we pretty much covered everything, I think, unless something comes to the top of my head. But, um, okay, where do you see... Stoneface Cowboy in the next couple of years. Real, realistically, you know, no guesses, just, you know, confidently, where do you see yourself in the next couple of years? Uh, I'd see us on a, uh, probably a bigger than, tech, bigger than regional touring level. Uh, I'd see us traveling around uh, all over the country. Maybe, hopefully, hopefully even some, some little jaunts out of, uh, over to Europe or something like that. Yeah, I would definitely hope to be in a, packed into a stinky little van, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, touring around, yeah, playing, the, <laughs> playing 340 dates a year, <laughs> yeah. never go home. Yeah, it's working and working. Home, and I don't playing. have a home. A home is my is the road. You know, that's 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 what I would like. Yeah. That's what I see us pushing for. Because I, I don't I don't think that we'll ever be satisfied. I don't think it's going to matter how much. Uh, success we have in any, you know, whether it's monetary, I need the stage or time, status, I need the... or whatever. I think it's the no matter what we do, we're always gonna be striving. Maybe not always to be better than we can't than we are now. I want to be better better tomorrow than I am today. But um, I, you know, I think we would get bored if we were able to do, just do one thing and have to do that. Yeah, one we can never do like one. We can never do like one little tour a year and then go. Hang out. I mean, maybe I, maybe I'll get so busy that that sounds appealing. Right. I hope I'm that busy. I don't ever but, want to take a hiatus. But I couldn't right. imagine myself ever not wanting to play all the time. Because that's, that's what I like to do. Plus I always you got to stay have. relevant. you got to be on the scene. If you're not, then if somebody else is. Yeah, if you're yeah. not on the scene with the song or a new <laughs> single, something new, uh, yeah, someone else is, and they're taking your spot, you know. Yeah, and that's the last and thing people you want. If, you if you don't have a new song out every every few months you know people lose sight of you all of a sudden you're that two years comes about oh man that song's two three years old it's yeah, like comes time, goes, the, time yeah, goes by. flies by 
just a song somebody remembers from that <laughs> one summer. You mm-hmm. know? <laughs> yeah, and y'all, all you're left to her is a one hit nostalgic wonder. <laughs> oh, yeah, I used to jam him. Yeah, I want to burn up before I fade away, that's for sure. All right, Rust well, never sleeps. <laughs> once again, I just want to thank uh, John Reynolds and Britton Pite for, for coming out to well, thanks the Thanks for suit. having us out here. We're... Hey, it, I know it's a long journey. I know you guys are here doing a show tomorrow night, and uh, I really appreciate you guys taking the time out. Well, that's one of the reasons that we came down early was to make sure to get this done. I appreciate that. Thanks for having and, us. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug some more dates, if you guys don't mind. I'm, same dates, so guys, please pay attention. Uh, they're going to be at uh, O'Brien's Irish Pub tomorrow night. In Temple, Texas at 9 o'clock. Uh, they're going to be at Rednecks Draft House and Billiards Friday, August the 9th in Midland, Texas at 8 o'clock. Uh, on Saturday, August the 10th at Boondocks Bar and Grill in St. Angelo, Texas at 8 o'clock. And then they're going to be back in Colleen uh, on August the 17th, which is a Saturday, for a Celebrate Colleen Festival. And it starts at 6 o'clock. And Friday, August the 23rd, back at O'Brien's Irish Pub starting at 8 o'clock. And you can check them out at StonefaceCowboys.com. And uh, ReverbNation.com backsta- backslash, I'm sorry, Stoneface Cowboys. And you can check them out on Facebook as well, uh, Facebook.com backslash Stoneface Cowboys. And you can check out the Central Texas Music Experience on everything but Reverb Nation. So, like, uh, we have our Twitter page, uh, we have our YouTube page, we also have our Facebook page, and now we're on live on Ustream. And um, like I said, Wednesday, uh, Tuesday night, we're going to have this video posted. And we'll also have this up on iTunes as well. And uh, let me plug our sponsors one more time before I forget. I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, This episode of the podcast was brought to you by Horizon Design Photography. You can go to www.horizondesignphotos.com or you can hit them up on horizondesignphotos at gmail.com. They do weddings, portraits, and events. You can visit the website and they can, you can uh, purchase digital files or prints. Uh, And also, uh, Benez uh, Custom Leathers. Uh, you can go to facebook.com backslash Benes Customs. They specialize in custom handmade leathers uh, like belts, uh, holsters, slings, phone cases, etc. So go ahead and, and go on Facebook and check them out. And um, wow, that's a, that's a mouthful of stuff. <laughs> so uh, once again, thank you guys for coming out. And if you guys don't mind playing us a closer, that'd be fantastic. Okay, what do you want to hear? Do you want to hear one about Mexican girls? Or we could do one about booty calls? Well, we could do one about crazy girls. Let's do crazy girls. I think everybody knows a crazy girl. Okay. When she wants to spend the night She calls me baby She says everything's alright It's just fine But I should have said no I guess I lost my mind Guess I lost my mind I should have said no And I guess I lost my mind I guess I lost my mind I should have said no And I guess I lost my mind She lost her phone, then she lost her keys, and then she lost control. She wasn't waiting for me, but she'll say, Can I stay? Cause I got no choice. I should have said no, I guess I lost my voice But I don't really know, but I'm willing to bet But she was stealing my stuff since the day that we met She steals my pillows and then she steals my clothes She tried to steal my heart, I just wouldn't let go Oh no, 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 I wouldn't let go she tried to steal my heart, but I just wouldn't let go Oh no, 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 I wouldn't let go Yeah, she tried to steal my heart, but I just wouldn't let go 
Since the day that we met First she steals my pillows Then she steals my clothes She tried to steal my heart I just wouldn't let go She's 22 At least I think But she acts 17 Every time she starts to drink And I let her stay the night Well I don't know why Just because I should have said no Guess I lost my car All right, once again, thank you for coming out, and uh, it's been a great experience. Uh, this is a Central Texas Music Experience uh, signing out with John Reynolds and Britton Pyatt. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.